Hiya, hiya, whoo, champion. Today is Momo's birthday. He doesn't know anything about that. Come here, Momo. Come here. Oh, it's your birthday. It's your birthday, dog. You happy, dog? Get it. Oh, I wish you could see him making the full rounds. Good boy. You good boy. Oh, no. You messed it up, Momo. You look, it's your birthday, Momo. You messed it up. Get on out of here. Get, get, get. Oh, Chucky's here now, too. Chucky, you're here? Come here. We can have a time that you... How come you don't like it if the camera's here ever? You're nice other times. He just... There you oh, go. There yeah. it is. Then there's Momo. There's just a lot going on. There's a lot going on. I get it. I get it. Okay. Hi there, homesteaders. Today, I want to show you this interesting new ferment thing I've been looking at. Honey and garlic. So today, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to be fermenting some things that I've done a lot of times, but I just can't get enough of. Can't get enough. Some sauerkraut and some more jalapenos. Always the jalapenos. Yeah, sorry. I know you've seen it before, but you'll see it again. Just <laughs> really sped up and short. We're trying to f perfect this process, so yeah. why don't we head inside and get going. Let's go. We're Kaliki and Brett, a rugged and adventurous gay couple who are sick and tired of clashing with life in the city. So we decided to head into the desert to chase our dreams and thrive. Along with our furry friends Chuck and Momo, We'll explore DIY projects, tiny house construction, gardening, hiking, cooking, and share what it looks like to jump headfirst into homesteading. So subscribe and join us on our dusty adventures to build this desert dwelling. Today I wanted to talk about something that I've been reading about lately and it just really intrigued me and that is honey fermented garlic or it's also referred to as fermented honey and garlic, it just kind of depends. Either way, same thing. It is one of the easiest things I've ever seen that you can ferment. Basically you're just mixing honey and garlic. You don't even have to like chop the garlic up, you just want to cover the garlic with a little bit of honey so it's all coated and it can bubble away and do some freaky fermentation things. I've heard it's a great way to prevent colds and flu because of the antiviral and antifungal properties of honey and garlic, so the only thing I could think of to make it any better would be to let it ferment a little bit. Sounds kind of weird, but we're definitely into fermented things here as you might have noticed before. Today I'm going to prepare this interesting health tonic, or it's also been called a condiment. I think you can probably use it for all sorts of things, and it sounds really good. So I'm excited to get this going. So this fermentation process is only going to require one jar with the lid, a whole bulb of garlic, and about a cup, cup and a half of honey. And you want to make sure that the honey that you're getting is a raw honey because all of the bacterial, fun, good stuff that's going to ferment in there is going to be gone if it's a pasteurized or cooked honey. Since we don't have any bees yet, like we mentioned in our last video, I'm going to be using some of the honey that we used in that recipe for Brett's Honey Tofu. It's Wild Mountain brand, raw, 100% pure, natural honey. And it says, eat wild mountain honey for health. And this is from Oakland, California, so it's not the most extremely local thing I could be getting, but it's not too far. And that's something that I want to improve on, that's why we're going to be getting our own bees before too long. It says this is unblended, unfiltered, undiluted, U.S. grade A fancy. Alright, well it looks pretty good. I've had to really hold myself back from eating excessive amounts of honey the past few days because I knew I wanted to get this recipe done before all of this ran out. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is just peel the garlic by lightly smashing them so it releases a little bit of the juices but doesn't totally crush the clove. Some people like to use a knife to do this, but I just like to smash it with the palm of my hand. I feel like it's one less dish to use. You don't want to completely smash it like this necessarily, but I tend to underestimate my strength and I just keep completely crushing each one of these. So 
So I just wanted to go ahead and rinse all of the stickiness from the garlic off of my hands so I could go through these a little more thoroughly and make sure there's no skin left on there and throw them into the jar. So you want to make sure that your jar has lots of extra room in it because I've heard that this can bubble up quite a bit and if it does it's going to be sticky honey bubbled up fermented mess and nobody wants that so I may have gone a little overboard with how much extra room I put in here because I only want to cover the very top of the garlic. If there's too much honey on top of the garlic I've heard that it can trap the moisture a little too much on the inside and then some things can start to go wrong. I'm gonna go ahead and open up this honey and cover these cloves. Garlic and honey is one of the most wonderful flavors. That combination is just so good and I can't wait to find out what this fermented version is gonna be like. You want to make sure that you get all of these completely coated as much as possible. I was going to just flip the container over, but I don't know if I'm quite ready to do that. I just want to let it sort of coat and then we'll let it sit. So the garlic definitely has a tendency to float in honey. That's why you need to check it and make sure everything stays submerged over time. Looks like everything's coated though, so that's probably good enough for now. I actually think maybe that's not quite enough honey, so I'm gonna add even more. Alright, that's gotta be good. <laughs> I just love honey! So, we only filled this jar up to about one cup, which is definitely less than I thought it would be. I thought we were gonna use at least a cup of honey, and if that garlic's in there, then we didn't. That's okay though, because I've got plenty of other plans for this honey that I'm excited to do now that we have this leftover. I did have to go back over and push these cloves down because it seemed like when they were coming up to the surface they just weren't even coated. I really just want to make sure that everything goes well here so I'm just pushing it all back down as much as I can and getting everything to totally coat with that honey. And then finally I'm just gonna pop a lid on there. I don't want to screw it on all the way because with any fermentation process there's gonna be some degassing and this one isn't any different. So that's it. We're just gonna leave this on a cool dark shelf in the back of the house and let it sit for a few days. Then I'll come back and check it, make sure that everything's still submerged in the honey and we'll just let it go until it seems ready. This is one of those things that we're gonna just have to update you on over time because it can take anywhere from a week, a month, I've heard sometimes even a year or more. I'm really excited and we will definitely keep you posted on how it goes. All right, well that's it for me here in Kaliki's kitchen. Why don't I send you outside to Brett and you guys can get going on his recipes. Oh, hi Audrey, come on in. Today we're going to be doing some more fermentation. I'm going to start by doing a jalapeno sauerkraut. Basically like a regular sauerkraut, but with some sliced jalapenos thrown into that. And I'm also going to be fermenting more jalapenos because we already went through all the ones we did in our last episode. So it's time to re-up on that. So I'll just go in and get everything chopped up. So first I'm just going to chop up all the cabbage. As I'm chopping it up and putting it into a bowl, I'm going to add in a little bit of the salt. I'm going to use a tablespoon of salt overall, but I'll put in just a little bit at a time. Now that I've got all of the cabbage chopped up for this, I'm just going to start massaging it and kind of hitting it with my hand to break down the cell walls and let all the liquid out of it so that'll make a brine for it to ferment in. This is a good way to get out any aggression you have, just like take it out on that cabbage.
once that is all nicely wilted down and released a bunch of liquid, I'm gonna fill it into the jar. And then as I'm putting it into the jar, I'll put the jalapenos in there as well. I'm gonna put a whole leaf that I set aside over the top to keep any little pieces of cabbage from floating up above the brine. And I'll secure that with a weight and one of my fermentation lids. And then I'll suck out the excess air with this little pump. I'm just going to chop up the rest of these jalapenos. I'm going to do some sliced up and some whole. Just cut the tops off of the ones that I'm going to do whole. and add in my brine, which is the same as last time, just one teaspoon of salt to one cup of water. And again, just put a weight on top and the fermentation lid and suck out the excess there. All right, so I've got everything done now. I have, I added a little rock into this one because my weight wasn't pushing all the peppers down just because this jar is bigger than that. But so here, I've got the whole jalapenos. There's a few slices in there, just because they wouldn't fit in my other jars. I've got these two more jars of the jalapenos, just sliced up. And then spicy sauerkraut. So, now it's just a waiting game. It'll be about two weeks for the sliced peppers, maybe three weeks for the whole peppers, and three or four weeks for the sauerkraut. So once the sauerkraut is done, we'll do an update on it. Let me know down in the comments what are some of your favorite things to do with sauerkraut. And maybe we'll do that in an upcoming video. So a little bit more about fermentation. You don't necessarily have to use those lids that I'm using, that I'm sucking the air out of. That helps from oxygen getting in and making the fermentation go bad, but as long as everything is submerged under the water, that really shouldn't happen anyway. So yeah, it's not necessary to have those lids, but it really does help. I've fermented things without those lids, and it's usually okay. I've only ever had things go wrong one time when I was making sauerkraut, and it just, it got weird. I don't know what was happening. I was not using those lids, and just something contaminated it, but you definitely can tell the smell is just different when it's not right. So if you know what sauerkraut is supposed to smell like, then you'll know if it's wrong. It used to be so young and beautiful. Oh, I think I just stepped in dog poop. Uh, it smells so bad. Alright. Crazy dog. Lightning dog. Come here, Momo. Now get, you're covered in them. Go! Don't get the camera again. Well, we ended up making way less honey and garlic than I was hoping, but I'm really excited to see how this turns out. It's actually been a few days since we started this ferment, and it's definitely requiring constant turning, so it's submerged all the time. And it's getting a little more liquidy than it was originally. The honey that we have left in the container is way thicker than this. You know we're out here in the cold, so... It's going. I'm liking where it's happening. I'm liking what's happening. <laughs> it's also been a few days for the sauerkraut. Spicy jalapeno sauerkraut. And not much has really happened. It's starting to bubble a little bit. I had to push it down a little bit more because this weight that I have on top just isn't big enough to press it all down. So some of this cabbage was floating. So I got that pressed down again and it seems like it's going pretty good. It's not sour yet, but it's starting to do its thing. If you enjoyed this episode and you want to help us to keep making these every week, then be sure to check out our Patreon page. You'll find lots of cool extras, including all of the recipes from Brett's Kitchen and behind-the-scenes footage of what we're just doing throughout the week. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell here on YouTube so you don't miss the next episode of Desert Dwelling. See you next Tuesday. Bye! Bye.